but the knight sometimes wants to venture on over to the king side and inflict some problems on that exposed black side of the board. Yeah, it's amazing that visually it looks like black's got such a strong attack on the queen side, but there's there's so little to show for it. And it's not like black's position is collapsing imminently, Robert, but it's more that there are these cagey ideas like queen d3, queen g3, and you're going to start harassing the knight, and you're going to start pressuring the rook. And if you just play the move queen d3, you're already threatening uh, to push the pawn down to f5. So the clock is ticking here for MVL literally and figuratively on the queen side. It is indeed. I mean, you need to get that rook on h8 over to c8 ASAP, but that would require you to castle into danger. So that black king, it's not going over to g8 anytime soon, I don't think at least. And as soon as I said <laughs> that, he goes right forward, but look no, at the evaluation bar. It says, I hate that move. e7 is hanging. You're pointing to the pawn push to f5. So he wants to bring more firepower into the attack. And now uh, the D5 square will be whites as well. So if you can reroute a knight over there, that would be great. But in the meantime, E7 is dropping. White can play F5 to F6 afterwards as well to go after the H6 pawn, which will be loose. I'm going to show this on the analysis board. This is a cool line. And they might follow this line. I don't see an alternative. But after Bishop D7, you grab the pawn on E7, not because you want to win a pawn, right? That's never the motivation in these types of positions. But in order to pave the way for the pawn to reach F6, I guess the engine, not a big fan of this move, maybe just due to knight takes f6. Uh, and the, the bloodthirsty, power-hungry engine just wants to play b3 and say, again, laughing in the face of danger, get off me. And after rook c7, just a calm move, Robert, like queen f4. And you talked about heavy lifting. This knight on d4 is a monster. It's restraining four, four of black's pieces. All of them are aiming at that knight directly or indirectly, and they can't do anything. That's actually incredible, but what's also incredible is what's happening in the game continuation, because after the move F5, Maxime Whoa. says, sorry, you want to take my bishop? Well, I'm going to go after the C2 pawn somehow, but is it working here? After F takes E6, what does black have? So is it rook, rook takes C2. C2 check? Oh, oh my goodness. Knight C2, queen B2 is mate, so white would have to give away the queen. Wesley says, I want none of it. Wesley is the calmest player on the planet. I it's really ridiculous. believe that. I've said it so many times where he just plays the position. He's not frazzled by the thought of an attack. But now let's take stock of the position. Right now, a rook has been given up for that knight in the center. And so what black has is a bishop, a light square bishop for a rook. Now, whose king is safer? The white king looking a bit vulnerable at the moment where a rook is staring down the c-file, the queen on b6, a bishop on a2, not threatening anything just yet. But that black king on g8, with that rook staring down on h1 and the queen lined up towards the h6 pawn, I feel like, as you're highlighting, with f6, knight f5, and all these types of moves, it's the black king that's ultimately going to fall victim to an attack. Yeah, I don't see a single follow-up here for MVL. So much so that I would just consider playing f6 here. Oh. Knight takes b3 is a little iffy, yeah. No, f6 is beautiful geometry. After bishop d1, queen d1, oh. you have to play knight f6. And the rook on c8, oh LPDO, gosh. Danya, LPDO. My favorite acronym, loose pieces drop off. Unbelievable. Bishop d1, queen d1, knight f6. You grab the knight and then stick the queen on g4, forking the king and the rook you thought would be completely uninvolved in any tactic. MVL forced to capture immediately. Okay, but now the h6 pawn is a goner. Can you just take on f6 take? and take on h6? Absolutely. Bishop f6 and rook h6 just looks devastating. Yeah, the material count isn't even that important here. Nope. It's more so that the black king is under heavy fire. And look what's happening. He goes, queen takes h6 instead. Oh. That looks perfectly good because uh, you are threatening all sorts of queen h7. Oh, my gosh. Like that. And as, oh, my more God. geometry beautiful. there. That's amazing. Show that. You should definitely show that in the analysis board. So if bishop d4, then rook d4, is that a blunder? We missed queen takes d4. No, he saw it. You check on h7. You check on h8. Why are you trading queens when you're attacking? Well, guess what? After rook takes h8 check, that skewers the rook on c8. Robert, the poor rook on c8 getting victimized in every one of these lines. Just seamless calculation by Wesley and MVL with a sad move, queen d8. And at this point, you're Ooh. administering the last rights. Yeah, queen. queen h8 is checkmate. You sacrifice the queen, replace it with the rook, and the knight in f5 does the rest the job covering e7 and g7 escape squares but this game has all about been all about as wesley so takes a one-point lead loose pieces dropping off that rook 